like I, I didn't. <laughs> no, you're good. All right, welcome back to Bud's React, and today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're doing a uh, scientific video um, from the Great Curse Curse Gazette, which um, is a great science channel. Go check them out if you guys haven't. Um, hey, 20 million subscribers for the science channel. You know he makes stuff simple and interesting for us, um, and that's why we that's why we love him. So we're going to be uh, watching what happens at the moon crashes into the earth should be interesting let's get right into it yeah i love watching this guy's channel it's all, all, always like the most simplistic greatest information i think the reason i found them <laughs> it was is because, simple well though no, someone was trying to explain to tim maybe it was like how you can't dig below like florida and find water or, so, or something like one of those kind of like tim the tap man moments <laughs> and they sent him a video he was like oh that's how the world works. Okay. <laughs> it was great. Right, let's, uh, let's watch this. All right. Let's do it. Old, very scientific and important question. What if the moon crashes into Earth? It's more interesting and weird than you probably <laughs> think. Let's start with the basics. Why isn't the moon on its way to crash into us already? Gravity. That's my guess. Before he even says anything. Your answer. We know that Earth's gravity <laughs> pulls everything towards it, including the moon, but somehow it stays up, as if suspended by some opposite force. But there is no other force countering gravity. Instead, the trick to staying up is a sideways motion that we call an orbit. You see orbits every day. When you throw a ball, it makes a tiny little orbit. The only difference between the ball's orbit and the moon's is that the ball eventually hits the ground. Basically, the reason is speed. If you could throw your ball fast enough, it would bend around the world and come back to you. Next time I throw, throw a baseball, no I'm going to say, I'm orbiting this baseball at you. Forever. <laughs> and this is what the moon does. Falling sideways around Earth very fast with no air slowing it down. Orbiting Earth every 27 days at 3,600 kilometers an hour. So, for the moon to just stop in its orbit and plummet to the Earth would break more laws of physics than we have time to explain. So, it's no animation crash it into Earth. It's so great. Not sure. <laughs> to change an object's orbit, you need to change its speed, which changes where gravity takes it. But even small changes require enormous forces, which is why all the large objects in the solar system are so stable nowadays. According to science, the moon is big and very massive. Even igniting billions of rocket engines all over its surface would barely move the moon. It looks like nothing short of magic will make the moon fall, so we'll use a magic spell that slows down the moon so much that it changes its orbit and spirals towards Earth. Magic to get spell, the most that's, uh, the experience, that's aliens, the moon right, will take exactly one yeah. year before it hits Earth. Ready? Three, two, one. One. Do it. Magic. Month one. For the first few days, nothing really changes. The moon gets a tiny bit brighter and scientists get confused, but the rest of us don't notice anything different. The only noticeable real effect of the moon on the Earth are the tides. Tides bye bye, exist Bernie. because while Earth pulls on the moon, the moon's gravity pulls back Take on the Take it away Earth. by the ocean. Since the strength of gravity gets weaker with distance, different parts of the Earth feel a slightly different pull, which causes the Earth, especially the oceans, to bulge when the moon is above them and contract a little on the sides when it's not. As Earth rotates every day underneath the moon, the moon's influence fluctuates, causing the water level of the oceans to rise and fall by about half a meter twice a day. But with the moon drawing ever closer, high tide Never gets higher that. every day. At first barely noticeable, within a month the moon has covered half the distance to the Earth and ocean tides have grown to 4 meters. Every day high tide comes All right, and so waves basically where I'm living right now will be underwater. And there's oh, yeah. no end in sight. <laughs> with the moon drawing ever closer, tides rise ever higher, inundating another city and more inhabited land with right salty now, water every alive. day. Month like 2. <laughs> By the end of month two, the moon has covered two thirds of the distance to Earth, and global infrastructure is crumbling as yeah. tides rise okay, well, ten meters, <laughs> displacing up to a billion people who happen to live near the coastlines. Oh, okay. As ports become inoperable, shipping grinds to a halt. 
Not only will it so slow down the delivery of Quetzalcoatl's products, space it also on a skyscraper. things like food. Global communications fall into disarray. Ninety-five percent of the internet is powered by ocean crossing cables, and while these largely don't mind the water, their terminals on land do. Living inland doesn't guarantee safety either. Tidal bores cause rivers to flow backwards, carrying salt water to contaminate surface and groundwater supplies. Gas shortages follow as all refineries near the coast are abandoned. Countries are left with the supplies they had on their shelves, and strict rationing will begin. In the cities, chaos reigns during the scavenging hours of low tide, while survivors take refuge in high rises when the water returns. Month 3. Three months in, and the moon is close enough to disrupt communication and navigation satellites. While it's normally far too distant for its gravity to cause any major problems for our satellites, the closer it gets, the more warped their orbits become. As their fuel for orbital corrections runs out, satellites careen out of control. Months 4 and 5. <laughs> On Earth, the tides are rapidly growing to about 30 meters and will be reaching 100 meters in height in a few short weeks. At low tide, the ocean recedes hundreds of kilometers, exposing the continental shelf like a vast desert, while at high tide, walls of water drown agriculture, houses and skyscrapers. And now, almost five months in, the apocalypse has finished its warm-up act. Since the oceans are on average only three kilometers deep, the tides have reached their maximum. Up until now, the water in the oceans could flow, absorbing most of the moon's gravitational squeezing, <laughs> but now the Earth itself is really feeling the squeeze of the ever-approaching moon. These aren't so much tides of water, but tides of rock. The squeezing of the planet, combined with the weight of quintillions of tons of water sloshing on and off the tectonic plates, creates enormous stresses below and begins to cause earthquakes of increasing magnitude and intensity. It's impossible to say how serious these earthquakes might be or where they occur, but like a child oh, this is jumping on their bed until it breaks, no good can come of it. Well, yeah. Strong this is exactly what this is sounds like. Planets and moons. <laughs> Earth, sounds squeezing like 2012. the planet disrupts the magma reservoirs inside the crust, triggering sizable climate-altering eruptions in Chile, New Zealand, Yellowstone, and elsewhere. Yeah, Yellowstone. Meanwhile, wow. watching patiently above is the moon, oh, yeah. still no bigger in the sky than a small cloud. Within 75,000 kilometers of Earth, it is bright enough to illuminate the night sky like twilight. Months six and seven. Oh, so we'll be blind After too. half a year, nice. the moon is entering the space once occupied by geosynchronous satellites, where it orbits Earth every 24 hours. It appears to float at one spot in the sky, unmoving, cycling through a full set of phases every day, but only visible to half the planet. With the moon stationary above the Earth, the tides seem to freeze in place. Half the world flooded, half with its water seemingly returned to the sea. As if Earth is holding its breath. To That's some pretty the wild imagery. The Great Pyramids are As the moon sinks water. further, you might love, wonder love, if its gravity would overpower yeah. Earth, pulling you up and ending well, your misery. Fortunately, place. not. The Earth's surface gravity is about six times stronger than the moon's. So even if the moon were hovering right on top of you, you would still stay on the ground. <laughs> on the moon, things okay. are different, though. The near side of the moon is more strongly affected by Earth's gravity, so during the next few months, it starts to stretch forward towards the Earth into something of an egg. <coughs> Safe to say no rockets are being as the lunar rock flexes and changes shape. Yeah. Go to the moon right now. barely noticeable now, this squish will grow to hundreds of kilometers in a matter of months. Months 8 to 11. At this point, the apocalypse has arrived. And we can summarize the months oh. before the crash oh, as now it's everybody right. left has a really bad time. <laughs> the tides sweeping over the Earth slow down and then reverse Certainly their direction yeah. because the Moon now orbits Earth faster than it rotates. The planet will experience an abundance of earthquakes and volcanism. Massive amounts of volcanic aerosols rise high into the stratosphere, shiny enough to reflect sunlight breathe. back into space. What little light gets through is rust red and is periodically diminished by daily eclipses. The result is a rapid global cooling with acid rains and summer snows killing even the hardiest plants. The clock runs out on civilization. That's what happens Billions. in nuclear nuclear war. It hits and all the dirt and everything goes into the air. And then... Oh, basically blocks out sunlight, huh?
basically, and then it would cause like everything to freeze over, plus the radiation and stuff too. I mean, oh yeah. ...have perished while an X-shaped moon is still drawing closer. Let's get ready for the grand finale. <laughs> Month 12. Finally, in, at the end of the gone. year, the moon has reached the Roche list. Here's how it ends, folks, That's right here. the point where Earth's gravitational pull on the moon is stronger than the moon's own gravity. Things on the lunar surface start falling towards Earth, and by the time it crosses 10,000 kilometers, the entire moon disintegrates into rubble, smearing itself into a massive ring system around the Earth. Fortunately, the moon's disintegration means the misery on Earth has ended. No moon means the general apocalyptic nature of things comes to a halt. The oceans recede, flowing off the land one last time. Any survivors are treated to a view of tremendous arches spanning the sky, glimmering in the sunlight, illuminating the night sky more brilliantly than any full moon ever could, while meteor showers of moon dust fill the sky. It's hard to say what happens next, but the tranquility may be short-lived. If too much moon dust rains down, friction heats the atmosphere, possibly boiling the oceans. If not, the enormous <laughs> shadows cast by the rings, combined with all the volcanic and meteoric aerosols, block even more sunlight, and a period of runaway cooling could begin that freezes much of Earth's surface solid. So things get cold. Then they go back case, to normal for a brief point, second, and then they get really from cold. Submarines or bunkers or mountain tops. They will not have a great time before rebuilding civilization, and their success is not guaranteed. But at least they'll be trying to do so with beautiful rings in the sky. Got the new Saturn. So, how do you calculate that sort of thing? Well, you just need a bit of insanity and some maths. If you need to brush up on the latter, our friends from Brilliant are the perfect coaches to turn your curiosity. Ah, that was great. I'm trying to do an ad read at the end. I'm not listening to an ad read at the end. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of different theories among, like, basically how our, even, our moon even got here and collisions with other, like, in the past with the planet and basically that's how like all the planets that have rings around their planets. Are from moons. Yeah, it's quite insane how like <clears throat> the universe or other is all like glued. It, it's all glued together right now, where the there's alien. no cataclysmic things happening. No, there's cataclysm. It's called Russia. <laughs> it's just oh, on, Russia. It's on the verge still. All right, well that was great. I, I love these educational kind of videos. We should definitely watch more of these. Look, check out the, the other subjects and information he has going on but uh be sure if you mm -hmm. like subscribe click the thumbs up comment down below anything you want us to, to watch whether it's sports science technology random comedy funny anything and uh anything. be sure to check out tnn sports channel we'll leave the link below on that too anything to learn any financial advisors you guys listen to or anything like that and you want us to react to them send them our way all right, well, we'll see you next time. Peace.